Go ahead. Okay, here's the problem. We've got our indicator here measuring minus 50 degrees, and our transmitter is measuring room temperature. So clearly that's not indicating the proper temperature. It should be around 70 or so. Okay, and did this just happen just now, or like did it just, did you just restart, you know? It, it's been working, it just failed on us last night. Okay. So it was a working system. Okay. So tell me what you're checking and why. I'm just comparing the wiring inside the transmitter here to okay. the loop diagram just to make sure nothing got switched around. How about a measurement? Let's take a measurement. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'll just take voltage across my input here and see if I have power to it. I got. Negative 42 volts. Okay. Stay at least a foot away. It just get blurry otherwise. Okay. Uh, guess I'll check current too real quick while I'm okay. here. I don't have any current. No current. No current. So. Any ideas? What does that tell you about the problem? It's telling me that the transmitter is obviously not outputting the correct current. Mm -hmm. And since my polarity on my first measurement was backwards, that makes me think that somewhere along the lines the wires <coughs> got switched, so it's getting improper polarity to the transmitter, so okay. that's not going to work. So, so as you're connecting that wire, tell me what your next check is going to be. Okay, so I'm just going to go to the next junction box here and check the wire connections and see if they're correct still. Okay. to 9 and 10, do red and blue out, that all seems alright, let's take a quick voltage measure here. Sail negative, so okay. I think the problem's over toward the controller. Further back? Okay. Let's go then. I don't have to use That goes to test block 11, 7, and 18. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. I'm supposed to have red to 17. Black to 8. Or blue to 18. Okay, that's right. And then. Red and black, so Okay, it's negative there too. Okay. So that makes me feel like there's either a wiring problem on the controller or some sort of setting in the controllers okay. wrong. Alright. Okay, the controller. So I need a verdict in about fifteen seconds. Where are you thinking the system the problem is and the nature of the problem? Okay. I've I've Pretty sure it's going to be a wiring issue right here. Okay. Let me check real quick. 
So red to b5. Black to a4. That's fine. Resistor a4 to a5. And that all seems fine, so I'm thinking it's something in the controller programmed. Okay, controller programming? Yeah. All right. I'm not with you on that. No. And here's why not. Uh, notice when you were taking, when you're inspecting the systems, you, you kept checking the wiring connections, like if things were wired up. Remember what the scenario was I told you when this thing had failed? Yeah. It was working fine, it just suddenly failed overnight. So wires don't swap themselves on their own. So the odds of someone coming along here and changing wiring is, is unlikely. It's not impossible someone could have come yeah, along yeah. and mess something up, but it's unlikely. So what we're looking for is a sort of failure that's more likely to happen in an existing working system. So things like brakes, shorts, things of that nature. Now you're reading a minus 42 volts across the transmitter, which is funny. It, yeah, you that, didn't expect that. Yeah. So I'd go, I'd take a voltage measurement here. Let's go across your... Uh, Let's go across the cables right here as they land on the transmitter. It'll be B5 and A4. B5 and A4. And what do we get for voltage? We get 27 there. Now that's a healthy that's voltage. Correct. That's the right polarity. Correct voltage, correct polarity, but down at the next terminal block, the next junction point, wrong voltage, wrong polarity. So what does that tell you? Correct voltage, correct polarity, wrong voltage, wrong polarity there. not the correct wires running there. So, okay. I mean, I, I mean, if it's right here, uh -huh. and it's different there, it has to be something. I mean, there's a different voltage feeding in there then. Okay. Keep in mind, this is something that yeah. failed by itself. think that a short that shorted you wouldn't have any voltage there. Okay. And if you had an open along one of them you also wouldn't have any voltage there. Okay. So I'm not Let me provide some ideas here. I'll let you hold on the diagram for a moment. Yeah. If I'm reading right here um, about 27 volts, positive there, negative there. Over here it's 40 something, negative on 17, positive on 18. Clearly, clearly these two uh, sets of points are not common to each other. Yeah. We don't have a common connection. They ought to be in parallel. In other words, the voltage here ought to be exactly the same as the voltage yes. there. But they're not. Yes. Therefore, they're not in parallel, even though they should be. So, put the pieces together. What I'm going to do is measure across wiring here from B5 to 17. Being ideally common, we should read how much voltage? Zero. Zero. B5 to 17. And I read zero. What's my next point I should check? You should check your other wires, so the A4 to 18. Negative 53 volts. What does that tell you? They're not, it's not common. They're not common. What kind of fault are we dealing with? An open. An open, exactly. Right there. Now, here's the thing that tends to throw people on this. Where do the minus 42 volts come from? When you power down certain Rosemount transmitters, in the act of powering down, there's a DC-DC converter circuit inside there, switching a capacitor back and forth to change voltage and current. In the act of powering down, that capacitor often retains a negative charge, the wrong polarity. And so it shows up as being a minus, in this case, minus 42 volts, which is kind of odd. You usually don't expect that sort of thing. You would expect open wire, no voltage at all. Yeah. But clearly we know from our other principles of electricity that those two sets of points were not in parallel with each other, mm -hmm. so something had to be broken. We know that for a fact. Regardless of where that odd minus 42 volts is coming from, we knew that much for a fact. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So you're on the right path. You're tracing voltages back here. And you got to that point, and you read a good voltage. Uh, 
and you can see that there was a, a discontinuity or a difference in voltages between those two points and those two points that should have been identical. That was the clue that would tell you that we've got a wiring problem. Regardless of where the 42 volts is coming from, those two voltages ought to be the same and they're not. We know we do not have continuity between those two sets of points. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Something else too, uh, with the regard to the controller, it's highly unlikely that a programming issue could cause a voltage to be wrong. The voltage is coming right off the power supply terminals, which is either going to work or not. Uh, and if the voltage at there were incorrectly, it would be most likely a hardware problem, not, not software or programming. Make sense? Yeah. Okay.